thought there. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm taking off my mask for a while uh, so that you can recognize me. Uh, yes, so I'm Tony from Annette Gallery, and I hope you are all safe uh, and well. And I am actually the curator of Majapat Exhibition, which I am right outside uh, the space right now. And it's happening at Stanford Art Center at Waterloo Street, Singapore, until the 19th of uh, December, which is next. Gallery and Sekarkam Foundation, and is supported by National Arts Council Singapore, Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia in Singapore, and Bank Indonesia. And this discussion session is also supported by Maybank Indonesia. So, As part of our exhibition, we are thinking of like, what is next uh, for the next generation? So we, sorry for the poor bandwidth. Uh, thank you for patience. And yes, yeah, so we always discuss like what's next for the that uh, but yes uh, I would like to welcome Lewa and Lewa will introduce the session and our panels today so Lewa take it away. Thank you Mas Tony so, selamat sore good afternoon and sel salam sejahtera Good greetings to all uh, welcome to the talk show innovating uh, with Tuban textiles so Tuban is a region in East Java where women still grow cotton we fit into cloth which they decorate with an Asian technique called batik. So batik from Tuban is unique, as you can see behind me, part of that. And also the scarf that I'm wearing. So, but there's only, there's sometimes there's one question if you decide to buy a piece of batik or a piece of uh, ikat or a piece of songket. So what am I going to do with that? What can we do to attract the young generation? And then we, have agreed not to use the word millennials in this discussion. We use the word, the term young generation. So the speakers, Wahyu Abraham and Yosopin Sri, with their respective vision and approach will answer your questions. So we've got uh, 15 minutes each for each speaker. And after that, we open the floor to discussion. So if you want to ask questions in Bahasa Indonesia, that's also possible. Uh, before we start, I want to read uh, this third farmer's prayer for planting cotton seeds from a book written by a respected uh, yeah. uh, scholar of uh, Tuban, uh, Batik in Tuban, Ibu Rensaringa. It's written in Javanese, but if I try to read in Javanese, uh, I think my accent will be totally wrong. So let's, let me read the, the English version of that. So the Kerak farmers prayer for planting cotton seeds. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most compassionate, my intention is to plant cotton, sticking together like a kamlaka tree, curling like the kaduya plant, indeed heavy and full like the sun, twinkling like the stars and the moon. Don't pluck this cotton of the tree if the moon and the stars have not yet set, all comes, all comes from Allah. So, uh, by Epin, uh, all yours now. Okay, thank you, Mas Lewa. Um, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, let me thank you for uh, Yayasan Sekar Kawung, uh, um, Singapore Embassy, um, and uh, a nerd gallery who has invited me in this event. Nice to meet you all. And my name is You can call me Yosepin or Epin. I'm currently I stayed in Bandung because I work in Maranatha Christian University as a fashion design lecturer. 
And today I'm going to share my experience uh, working this, uh, working with this 3D textiles from Tuban. And I believe that some of us have the same dream about the craft textiles. Okay, I'm going to share my presentation. Is it clear? Is it shown? Okay. So the title is uh, I Choose the Dream of Tuban, a uh, collaboration to improve local craft styles. And the first time I have a chance to work with this intriguing textile was last year when Mbak Kiki or Ibu Chandra Kirana contact me and we discuss a lot about many things and one of them is about Tuban textiles. And Tuban, as we know and mentioned before, is located in coastal area in the north and they became a center of uh, trading since Majapahit. And because of that, the culture is mixture of from and it in the textile. And we, we can see the, here, um, it's called Tenun Gedogan, uh, which called, uh, why it's called Gedog because of when the weaver uh, start to is and still things from this style is uh, the color is uh, thicker than another man because of uh, the texture that produced from the hand spot in Indonesia and the material is located locally in the or village uh, uh, the, uh, you can see the mass the section back there and then uh, the weaving activity uh, the women of uh, women in there and be um, and start last year I to make a concept about uh, this came from the concept of home because uh when the past spread in Indonesia and uh, across the world I think we've lost a uh, connection. Uh, hello, Mbak Epin. I think she's got uh, probably I think her connection. My camera. Yeah, maybe you, you took off I your can. camera. Maybe it's easier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you knew with, with the iteration, right? And spirit is concept of home. Uh, it start when the pan began to spread in Indonesia. It make us cannot go everywhere, so we got stuck our home. And uh, what we do in our home, we start to reunite with our family, with everything, and in this closest place called home. And it is me to the activity like help colleagues uh, in planting and even crafting and this uh is our picture of home atmosphere uh, mother and daughter and from care village and woman and the keywords i want to show uh, through this inspiration is uh, 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 and craft and also and this is the first collections besides using 
the two band textile also make the two from batik were from but and material is from two band. And the pattern shown in this portion is means uh, to reduce the left over materials and it looks simple and comfortable to wear. And the shape is uh, borrowed by the Chinese scholar because this collection is made when the when we celebrate the New Year of a Chinese uh, a Chinese New Year last year. And this is the details of the collections. It's uh, the gede gede woven from Tuban. It's called gede. It means uh, the bamboo plated uh, for their walls. And besides this uh, collections, I also uh, com completed with the accessories, small accessories like obi. And then uh, this is combined with the flower knitted. It's very detailed. It's all from uh, Yayasan Sakar Kawung together with uh, from Bali. It's their program, the community empowering program besides uh, in Tuban area. And this is the uh, mix and match with the Tuban within. And then it's combined also with the Sumba textiles. So I try to put another color, another characters through the collections. And then after about one to half uh, semesters um, in this year, I start to let my students to have an experiment with the local textiles. So uh, they directly uh, touch these textiles and we have a collaboration program with Yayasan Sekar Kawu making uh, accessories back project. And this uh, fifth left uh, designs is by Janessa Angelica who came here also. And the fifth is from Kirana Putri Kartawijaya. So from this tense uh, designs, I let Sekar Kawu choose uh, this the students produced by themselves in most. So it's the hand the round bag and the square sketchbook. Uh, they make this because they want to bring their sketchbook. So they create the concept that they also want to wear it. And then the buckle bag and then the bags. I think I'm to the government, academic, general, industry, like tech, and also media. We, because we have our own ability or access partners to something to highlight or to make assets as an important project like the government they can put in the in their main agenda I'm so sorry for for the pure connect uh, for the poor connection in here. Uh, I think it's <laughs> follow in this collaboration. Our students uh, really need to uh, uh, and the industry also, uh, the bigger industry, smaller industry like textile, craft, fashion, and makeup. We can learn together or we can uh, make the sponsorship by them. And the other uh, important part is the media for the publication and to spread the awareness for these marvelous textiles. And then what is the next? Um, 
I, I share a little bit about our experience last month together with the 15 universities in Indonesia. We creating a fashion show together. We collaborate with uh, textile industries. So I think it's a very possible to help the the big the bigger event for Indonesia uh, together with academics, the ministry, and the associations also like Indonesia Fashion Chamber or Jakarta Week or other parties. Uh, we can create um, a event or and. I have a dream that academics uh, who has an uh, obligation to create young designers um, to be more aware to our uh, local textiles that have a richness from uh, uh, that was I hope this sharing is helpful for your future experience and I'm very sorry for the for my pure connections. Thank you, Sewa. Uh, thank you, Maya Pit. Uh, yes, uh, no, no, no worries about that uh, 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 the connection. But uh, before I, I uh, uh, give the floor to Baswahio, let, let me uh, just uh, uh, read to you all the key points and then maybe you, you, you take down and we can develop later when uh, during the discussion. So the dream of Kuban, so it's combining different textile from different uh, areas in Indonesia, in your case, uh, Tuban with Sumba. And you also encourage you being a, a lecturer, I'm design, I'm design lecturer, you encourage students to be, to be creative. And you, also, you also mentioned that you show uh, the accessories created by the students and you uh, emphasize uh, uh, the importance of collaboration the textile, craft industry, fashion, also media, and you encourage your students also to, to, to be aware and look at, uh, look inward and look at the, the, the different textile from different regions in Indonesia. So basically, uh, the presentation is about uh, combining the different textiles and creating yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, a piece of art, cloth, yeah, that collaboration. Actually, yeah, collaboration, and uh, clothes that you can wear, and simple, comfortable. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's what I I I, uh, I could get from your presentation. Yeah, that, that there's a bit of a problem in with with the with the connection, but uh, I think we, we can we can survive. So now, uh, uh, Maswayo, it's your time now. Hello everyone. But before we start, let me share my screen first. Okay, I think it's pop up, right? Is it seen already? Yes, okay. yes, it's seen. All right, so before we start, let me say thank you so much for the Indonesian Embassy for Singapore and uh, Ibu Sandra Kirana from Sekar Kawung and all the support sponsors that um, supporting us so that this event could happen today and thank you for having me. So uh, before I explain about my um, point of view in the, doing the noon, let me introduce myself. My name is Wahyu Abraham. I'm a fully designer like for my life and I working for international garment manufacturer in a research and development department for almost 10 years now. And uh, with the noon, I started in 2017. And I, you know, tell myself that I should be their body. Like, it's something that I'm gonna explain to you guys regarding the future for our, uh, for the young generation in terms of the, this body thing. Okay, so let's move on. So this is my recent collaboration with uh, Sekar Kawong. So basically it started from, um, you know, a thinking on how to giving a body for a great soul. So basically because I'm a fashion designer, so I kind of thinking that I could be it body because 
in my opinion, the wastra it's something essential and it's it's you know the 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 important thing of the wastra for me is the meaning, you know, the processes. So it's kind of related to a soul, but it's great soul. So that I think I could, you know, giving myself as a body to present to the generation, like nowadays generation. So the collaboration was Mudotes No Astro. Why? Because, you know, I want to start with the love first, because, you know, when you love something, you will do anything. So basically, it's like reflections of love from the young generation, from their culture. And they like, you know, sort of wanted to bring their identity into their, you know, daily life. So it's more into like, you know, we are bringing the tenon into something that we can wear every day, like daily basis. But in this, um, you know, collaboration, I'm trying to like, you know, pulling the tenon itself to a, um, you know, skateboarder, costume if I could say and uh, I will show you a little bit about the collection in a video form so I wish that you guys enjoy it like for the three minutes of our collaboration video that uh, showing the Mudo de Snow Astro So basically here we got six outfits and, and we are trying to, you know, combining different motifs that um, made in Tuban. We have uh, two looks with the Gedok Tuban and uh, yeah, with the Batik uh, technique, it's called Krompol's Nam. And then we have one old pattern, it's called uh, Kembang Polo. And then we have like the stripe looking pattern. It's called um, Pagar. So basically it can be like old motifs, but again, if we leave it behind and we, we just to stick into, you know, what people are gonna to say, you know, this culture gonna disappear. So instead of, you know, I trying to, you know, just introduce this back to the generation, the young generation so that they more aware that they have something called Tenun Gedok Tuban. So yeah, for now, I'm not really like thinking about how I should, you know, um, thinking about the full meaning of the fabric, but my purpose is to just to introduce it first. So they start loving it, they start learn about it. Yeah, that was my thinking process in this collection. So I'm not like, you know, giving a heavy, um, you know, heavy topics, but I trying to like approach in a way that they, you know, kind of curious first, you know, start loving it first, but again, in their, you know, um, way of dress up. Okay, so you guys could watch the full video in our Instagrams, Karkawu and Wahyu Abraham. So that's all I guess, because I really wanted to, you know, have a discussion instead of, you know, explaining into like detail because it's going to be like kind of boring. I really wanted to, you know, answer a question from you guys regarding this, like more into the detail. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mas Wahyu. Very nice presentation. Thank you from my epin also. Uh, just in case you're wondering what is Tanun Gedok, so as, as I mentioned earlier, so women in, uh, in Tuban, it's Java, they grow cotton, we fit into cloth, and then they decorate it with uh, motifs uh, in batik techniques, so we call it Gedok. So from uh, Maswahio's presentation, uh, key points that we can, uh, we can uh, note, take note is that how to introduce them to the young generation, make them appealing, so the motives and the meaning will not be lost. And then basically what uh, Wahyo is trying to do is combining different motives. Uh, and then these three words, Mudo, Tresno, Wastro, uh, 
could you translate for me, please, Mas Wahyu? What, what is that? Sorry, I may have missed that. Mudo is is it young? Yes, young. And Presto is, is love, love, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, and Wastro is the um, traditional cloth. Oh, that's great. Thank you, thank you. So just like uh, um, Evelyn earlier, so we're talking about uh, combining different motifs and then uh, make them appealing uh, to to the younger generation because they are. We, are, we need to cultivate interest uh, 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 on Indian text, Indian, Indian textiles to them. So uh, now we, we, we open to a uh, question and answer. Uh, my story is that we, we, have, we have half an hour for this. What was the... the, the... Uh, yes, we do have about half an hour. Oh, okay then. I, I mean, you can, you can, you can ra raise your, uh, what do you call this one? Press hand or put in the chat. But before I'm gonna, I've got, let, allow me to start earlier. Uh, uh, these two questions, uh, my question for both of you. So sometimes we are confronted uh, to Wahyo and also to my Epin, Evelyn. We always confronted with, uh, when we try to promote textiles or a baju or a cloth, we are confronted with this question, how to make it affordable. So, but what is affordable now? We want to pr uh, promote and uh, protect, but on the same time, we are confronted with this, okay, it has to be cheap because otherwise people won't buy it. So yes, uh, maybe you must uh, buy Evelyn first and then Mas Wahyo can answer that question. Okay, I think I can start it first. Okay. So basically I never believe that the noon going to be cheap because it's kind of, you know, a long process and it takes, you know, months to creating it. And, you know, if we make it cheap, you know, I think we lose the appreciations towards, you know, people that involved into the making process, you know? And uh, things like handmade never be cheap. That's what I believe, you know, because we pay for those long processes, you know, those tears, blood and sweat, and we are paying for whole essential, like the whole story of it. We are not paying just a piece of clothes that we can, you know, buy it if it was made by machine. This is something that made by someone that, you know, giving their dedications towards the cloth itself. So I think never think that it's expensive. You just pay for what, you know, work for it. You know, you are helping people to stay alive. You, you're helping people to keep themselves creating it, you know, and keep it for the future. So I think word of expensive is just, you know, from someone that, you know, randomly trying to be in the Tendon community and then they not having like wider research of it. So I'm not really, you know, bother if people say it's expensive. It means that, okay, it's our, you know, like our, our responsibility to make sure that they understand as well. That's why now one of my responsibility to make the young generation understand that this is something, uh, you know, the same, like when you buy expensive shoes, you also learn if, it, if that shoes also may be handmade or it was, you know, worn by someone. But in another hand, I also need to make sure that they understand that why it's not expensive because it, it has long processes, it has, you know, meaning in it, you know, and it's also can be like something you're proud of if you, you know, able to telling that story. I guess, yeah. Well, basically my point is that Tanun cannot be cheap for sure. But Evelyn, uh, hey. what, what, what's your thought? Because you meet, you, you, you're mixing a different part, different part, uh, types of textiles from, so sometimes, and then, uh, yeah, so, and then which means that the cost could be higher too. But what, what's your view on that? Does it have to be cheap or how do you deal with that? The argument that it has to be cheap because sometimes being cheap, being affordable can be two different things. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, uh, the price um, 
if we can talk about the price for, for the traditional textiles, especially in Indonesia, I think it's quite cheap uh, due to the process, the long uh, time to make, to produce the, the, the textiles. Um, for example, like Tuban, it's and the cost is just maybe a five million rupiah. And uh, compared to the other products like fashion products uh, in the well end, it's not uh, expensive as their product. So I think for the local uh, textiles in Indonesia, I think it's very affordable and it's our job, uh, media, designers, academics to share about why it's a uh, cost uh, like that, uh, cost uh, maybe uh, until the tens, millions because of the process, because of the time that they need to put and if uh, we create a product um, like the well brand, we put the brand, we put the explanation, the complete explanation of it. Uh, we show uh, who's, the, uh, who's the maker, who's the crafter. I think it can be uh, cost a lot uh, to sell. Yeah, it can be more expensive, but it's very affordable to the, uh, I think, the specific market will will buy it. No, I, I guess, yeah. Yes, Mas, Mas, yes. Yeah. Yes. So I think, I think the mindset of having, you know, expensive and cheap in traditional cloth also, um, you know, the background also can be like, you know, we have like, you know, uh, the, the person that buy the cloth from the, weavers and then they're selling the product in a higher price right so this this transparency also something that costs you know this idea of uh, having price and cheap so i think what uh, the tuban community doing is like uh, more transparent like ibu also telling me ibu chandra that you know it started from they grown their own cotton and then they uh, weave the cloth and then you know in the um you know selling stage where they you know give the fabric to the end user also it should be in the transparency prices also can avoid you know the you know the idea of having cheap and expensive uh cloth it's it's just a matter of you know how we trying to be more transparent in the um selling the cloth itself as so, Yosefin, as uh, as Kai Yosefin said that it should be you know uh, mentioned the who's the weavers and then who's the uh, who's wh where's the producer where where the weavers from and so on and so on and the story behind it I think it's also like a little good movement but but uh, apart from that what I see that we don't have enough young figure that could you know deliver this because normally the the young generations like kind of you know lazy to come to the um you know sasapu like you know old person to get the explanations i think like someone like my Yosefin and maybe the other the other uh, young generations that could you know explain this in a way that you know okay like let's let's study this together i think it will you know break this stereotype sooner from now on, I guess. Let me like, try to encourage people to ask questions. I'm just uh, throwing names there. Jean, I saw Jean, uh, and then uh, David Chia and Bapak from Dinas Pariwisata. Pak, ada pertanyaan, Pak? Bisa dengan Bahasa Indonesia kalau mau. <laughs> yes. Oh, Bapak masih di mute. Uh, the, 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 before that, th there is a question from David there. Is there any way to brand it so that the only real tenun tuban can be sold as that and not a print? So, bagaimana so there is a way to make sure that uh, we we be selling the real thing because both um, Mbak Epin and also Mbak uh, uh, Mas Wai talk about uh, uh, cultivating the interest. So we not we have to go with the real thing. Siapa dulu? Anybody can 
both of you can, can answer that. The real question is in the chat. If you want to uh, check, you can uh, take a look also. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I hope the my connection is good enough. <laughs> okay. I can hear you. Um, yeah. yeah. There, there is, uh, in Indonesia, uh, some brand already start to use textile as their main um, textile for their collections and they use it the, the real textiles not the printed uh, like uh, uh, sorry fake batik or fake tenun like that and they uh, sell it at a relevant price and it's a lot, start to empower the local weavers yeah uh, last week so from Kiki, they also start to get the brand and to do the branding of the some of village in Indonesia. Sekarawung uh, not only uh, empowering the yeah, but also from Bali, from Sumba in Indonesia to cultivate their textiles and sometimes uh, repro the textile that's already, maybe already gone and a public didn't uh, acknowledge it again. And, uh, we we start to collaborate to do the branding. I think uh, that's my answer. Must I hear your okay. thought, please? Okay, so if we talk about the known and print, it's totally different technique. So when we, uh, when we talk about the noon, it's something that we so the noon to ban means like you know weave that made into ban. So if it if it's printed, it cannot be the noon because again the noon is the technique in making the cloth. So if it someone sell uh, you know printed fabric with the noon motifs, so Maybe yes, they could. Uh, they could say that it's tanun to ban motifs, but they better to mention the motif itself. What kind of motif it's uh, it's that? So it's still you know having a education in it. But for me, having a print, a printed fabric with tanun to ban motif, it's not a tanun. So I kind of you know want to uh, clarify this. In, in a different, you know, technique of it. Yeah. Okay, so basically, yeah, and, you, and the, yeah, and the strong character is uh, from the material, not only by the visual, uh, not only we can see, but we can also touch it, and it's become the uh, the price also for for the clothes, like to burn. Uh, they use uh, what is called the 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 woven the the hand spoon. It's more it's thicker than regular yarn, like in the others um, textiles in Indonesia. So it's become their their uh, yeah their, their plus. So basically, it's easy textile. for 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 to for tenuntuban uh, because it's yeah. woven and then the material is cut and then quite thick, so it's easier to differentiate between the print and uh, and uh, the real tuban ya. Uh, apa Pak dari Dinas Pariwisata ada pertanyaan enggak kira-kira? Uh, barangkali uh, selamat sore, uh, selamat siang menjelang sore. Uh, yeah. Kita dari Dinas Pariwisata Kota Medan, uh, tadi saya sudah mengamati uh, beberapa paparan. Uh, sebenarnya dari Sumatera Utara juga, teman-teman ini juga banyak bahan-bahan dari beberapa istilahnya tanaman-tanaman mungkin ya salah satu contoh tenun ulos ada itu tenun melayu barangkali mungkin nanti kita dari dinas pariwisata akan mencoba membuat suatu kegiatan apakah itu nanti seperti apa sosialisasi apa itu kan nanti kita berkolaborasi dengan desainer desainer desainer-desainer muda uh, di Kota Medan uh, untuk menjadi uh, salah satu kegiatan ini menjadi referensi bagi kami untuk ke depan uh, menjadi contoh 
uh, anak-anak milenial yang begitu kreatif dan inovatif. Saya rasa uh, itu saya dulu, Pak. Oke. Okay. Terima, Terima kasih, Sir. So from the, uh, the bap- Bapak from the, the, the tourism agency of North Sumatra, so he, he stressed out uh, stressed the importance of collaboration among young designers, young generation, and also to uh, a, a create uh, basically a, a cooperation uh, to promote, for example, in, in North Sumatra, it, it also rich in, in textile tradition, ulos, uh, uh, ulos, and also uh, songket weaving from from the Malay community there. Um, yeah, but uh, but Chandra, please, if you got some key points that you'd like to to share to complement the. the 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 the, uh, the presentation, please. Chandra from uh, Yayasan Sekarkaum, which is uh, uh, organizing this event together with uh, uh, Enod Gallery in Singapore. Yeah, thank you very much, Lewa. Uh, I would like to actually maybe respond to David's uh, question about: Is there any way to brand it so that only real tenun tuban can be sold as that and not not a print? Uh, it's still in very early phases, but we are trying to uh, think along the lines of creating a transparent process more to be able to deliver provenance. So maybe we will be adapting uh, blockchain technology. The government can also think about this actually so that we can really follow the textile from the land all the way to the wardrobe, have a transparent value chain and give credit wherever that is needed. Because uh, it is possible to like, for example, these handwoven textiles from Tuban that are made from uh, homegrown cotton, homespun yarn, All of this is created and planted without, um, with, with organic input only. But of course, it's it would be too expensive to to be able to apply for certification, etc. But today, I believe that we are already beyond the phase of having to go for certification. If we can harness the use of um, the internet of things and information technology, it is possible to create that. And hopefully we will be able to create a situation whereby in the future, weavers can connect directly to the people who want to wear their cloth. Maybe we could create a process whereby someone who wants to buy from weaver Ibu Sarina, let's say, but wants to be uh, assisted by uh, Maswahio to design her dress. All of that can be brought together on one platform and we will be able to break through the, 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 the problem of people complaining about the cost because they will really get a one of a kind. And The other important thing is they will get a product that has almost zero carbon footprint, which is very important for this day and age. Jadi mungkin itu, Mas Lewa, itu breakthrough yang sedang yeah. kita yeah. coba pikirkan untuk yeah. ke depan. So basically, yeah, thanks, thanks so much, Mbak Chandra, Mbak Kiki. Um, it's got so much homework to do, basically, because it's not, it's, we talk about promoting, but also Like uh, what what uh, David's question is is very it's valid. So how to really promote to make sure that people understand what they're buying, because mm. you've got cheap imitation everywhere. And mm. uh, just a few points that I I from the two speakers also by Chandra. So we need to uh, we need to talk about transparency. Explain to the public the process of creating this uh, particular uh, piece. Who makes it? Uh, we also need to educate the people and uh, promote the, the real thing. And uh, uh, among those, those, all those uh, uh, points that we need to make sure that people understand. But I've got a question, if you don't mind. Uh, so this is part when I uh, introduce the 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 talk. This key question. So if I'm buying, for example, this piece of. Naive, very naive question, but I think it's, it's a very common question. This is a piece of textile. 
this is a tuban, uh, uh, the, the brown seed, uh, long cloth like this. And then the question is that, what, why should I buy this? Because I don't know what I'm going to do with that. So maybe uh, Mas Wahyo, Mbak Epin, or Mbak Chandra can, can chip in and answer that simple question because I'm sure we ask those questions many times. So basically, so, so basically the, the main materials when we are creating the, uh, the clothing is fabric, right? So when someone come to me and asking me to making a garment out of the noon, I will ask the person like, where are you going to wear it? You know, what kind of mood that you, you know, want to present to the audience? And then with that, I start creating uh, a body, you know, to give this soul, you know, a place to, you know, showing the true color, kind of, you know. So basically, I, I will do like kind of, you know, a brainstorming first with the clients, because, you know, otherwise, if I creating something that just only good in my side, so it wouldn't be, you know, impactful. So if you said that if you have fabric and then you come to me, I will ask you like, where are you going to wear it? You know, what occasion you will, you know, go going to. Yeah, and then I creating the sketch and then I, you know, show it to the client, to you. And then if it's okay, I will make it, you know. So there but will be a discussion. Also, yeah, come again. Oh sure, discussion I will have a you. discussion. Yeah, and then I will, you know, kind of touch the fabric and then if it's not possible to, to make the uh, traditional cloth for, for example, for men's shirts, yeah, I will tell their clients it's not good for men's shirts because it's harsh, because it's like this, you will get this and you'll get that. And then you better to make it for pants, for example, or jacket. So I kind of have that brainstorming first before creating things. So it's more, you know, presentable and it's, you know, match with the character of the fabric and the garment. My opinion, what was your thought? Uh, fashion designers do in special textiles, especially like uh, expensive textiles. So uh, besides for fashions, there is also for interior purposes. Uh, for uh, I ask first for the uh, my clients or everybody who who wants to buy these clothes, but they confused with it. So I ask them, uh, is it for their uh, wear for they uh, wearing it, or they put it in their home, yeah, to display it or something to to just enjoy the clothes itself um they they don't need to cut it or they don't need to to uh, being able to wear it so it's depend on the client itself what's uh, the purpose of of their collections maybe sometimes they they just uh, put it in their in their uh, closets and sometimes they open it again and they enjoy again for uh, their friends for coffee time or tea time with their friends enjoying their collection of textiles yeah maybe uh, yeah just for enjoyment to Thank enjoy you. the process behind behind the clothes okay before we continue Mas Tony can I check with you what what what, what time are we going to end this is it about 4 p.m or maybe 4 5 4 4 5 or 4 10 Yes, uh, you're the boss. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, if we have questions, we can go all the way to four ten as well. Okay, four ten then. Um, yes. Um, I'm, I'm encourage you to ask questions because it's very interesting because this is this is, has something to do with uh, preserving the, the tradition. And then when uh, we did earlier chat with uh, Mas Wahyo and Bayosepin, I think uh, the key questions among others, how to make the cloth affordable, we, you guys have, have tried to answer, have answered that question. And also not only the oldies who can end up collecting and wearing those clothes. Uh, so how to turn them into wearable items appealing to the youngsters, young generation. 
Uh, one quick question while, while I'm waiting for others to answer uh, to ask a question. What about sacred motives? I think this is also very important. For example, if I've got in, this in my collection, I'm still learning about facts. I don't know whether they are, they are sacred or not. Some, there's some argument saying that you should not actually cut uh, 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 old pieces and turn it into a put uh, into a, 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 a dress because it will be uh, kualat. Uh, what is kualat, Mbak, Mbak Chandra? <laughs> kualat is uh, what is kualat? I don't yes. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. You, yeah, you will you will anger your ancestors by doing so. Yeah, uh, and after that, I will, I will, I will read another question from, from David. So yes, the sacred motive, how do we treat that? Mas, Mbak Epin okay. dulu, boleh? Okay. Okay, for sacred motives, first, uh, as a designers or as uh, academics, we must learn first for these textiles because it's not regular textiles. It's a very intriguing and very, um, yeah, uh, different. So we must know what's the concept behind the motifs, what for, uh, why they made, why the motif is produced, what's the meaning for their, uh, for the village or for the weaver itself. So maybe we can ask first to the weavers. It can be a, a war by the uh, buyers as their clothes or not. We must confirm first about that. If uh, they um, allow us to make to the collections, maybe it's for the very special collections like formal, and we can and we not uh, encourage the buyers to cut it uh, through the motif. So we must arrange the the the, the cut uh, process like the square shape. We put it in the obi or we put it in the kanban or um, spatial uh, appearance through the body. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, we must coordinate first with the wafer also. That's why here, yeah. Two different um, point of view. So if, if the sacred motif was produced in mass quantity, I definitely going to make cloth out of it, but, if the sacred motif only have one, as I ever, you know, before I have this collaboration with Ibu Chandra, and then there is one, uh, papat, ya, bu, uh, the uh, one setilur, that, setilur papat limo pancer, and it was only, uh, it was the only one. So I like kind of thinking a hundred times, do will I make a cloth out of it? Because otherwise, if it's gone. Or I, I made a mistake when I cut the fabric. Yeah. So, you know, people cannot, you know, duplicate that second motive again for another next pro uh, production uh, process. So, so if the fabric only one, I wouldn't cut it. But if the second motive, uh, like, you know, produced in mass quantity, I will use it. Because the purpose to creating a cloth out of the Tenun motifs, I mean, like the tenun itself, to you know, uh, promote again to the young generation. No matter they will, you know, love it or not, but we just, you know, deliver the message first. If they like it, they will learn the meaning of it. So that's depend. If it's only one, so let it, let keep it, so that people can, you know, duplicate it. So then, if it's already uh, in a stop, in a stop again, and then we can produce in cloth, and then we deliver to the market. Thank you, thank I, you. I, I, yeah, yeah. that's what I think. Yeah. Um, I've got this another question from uh, David, but I'm gonna ask uh, ask ask uh, um, but Chandra perhaps to help answer this question. So you may also check yeah. the chat. Are there any okay. contemporary new motives that that the younger generation can better identify with, apart from uh, contemporary fashion design so that younger generation don't think that they only belong to the old people like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is a, a, a very, very interesting question, actually. Um, ancient motifs sometimes can be very contemporary. 
like for example that motif of the batik titik tutul behind you lewa the red one with the white dots the, this, there, sorry. yes there, there, there. that is very very old that probably goes back to the 12th century when batik started um being used in Tuban, but the actual in traditional original motif was woven into the textile using a socket technique. So it's a very, very old motif, but it's also very young. It's timeless. So I think this question of contemporary new motifs is more about being part of the creation process from birth. That's, that's a very important uh, thing we need to pay attention to with younger people so that they feel that they are not only being, you know, given something that is already final. Young people need to know that they are also part of the renewal. And this is actually a very important message of this Tanun Gedok Tuban and the Monchopat, because the Monchopat is actually about the circle of life. And the circle of life is always renewed. And through that message, what we want to say is that textiles, traditional textiles, are a cultural heritage which will only remain alive if we continue to renew it over and over again. So one of the things we do when we are working in weaving or, or textile communities, Lewa, is to actually, uh, in a participatory way, try to dig back into the cultural roots and from there create with the community something new, which will look very old and classic, but will be new as well. That's one thing. And I would like to also respond a bit to your question about what do we do if we get this piece of textile. Yeah. Uh, this, 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 uh, this exhibition that is happening now is a very small one actually, but a lot of people are interested in it. I think because of the way the textiles are presented and the way we are presenting the whole journey of the cloth from the land all the way to the to the finished piece of cloth. And everyone loves to know that process. I think this is a very important point for Bapak from Dinas Pariwisata juga. Gitu. Jadi prosesnya ini sangat menarik dan sangat mendidik. Because in Indonesia, di Indonesia itu sangat-sangat amazing. The material, the genet, uh, the the botanical material yang kita bisa jadikan kain itu genius sebenarnya masyarakat Indonesia. So I hope that answers a bit uh, your question, David. Thank you for such a good question. Terima kasih for the opportunity, Lewa. No worries. We still have uh, seven minutes, but I, I, I'm sorry if I sound like I'm hijacking this, but uh, I like to ask questions because that's my job as a journalist. But <laughs> I don't mind if I may. I ask Mbak Epin and Mas Wahyo again. I mean, you guys, uh, from your presentation, you 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 sound very optimistic, and especially Mas Wahyo, you're very very optimistic. But I want to hear from you. What are the challenges that you're facing actually? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that people are got back to say, "Oh, I can't do this because this is not modern enough. You're charging me too high." I can't buy your, your, your design. I'd like to know, maybe from Maswa here first, what are the challenges actually? Okay, the challenge was the uh, timeline. For me, like when I work with Ibu, Ibu like giving me so much freedom to explore. Ibu Chandra giving me like, you know, wider range of, you know, exploration. But when it came to like another, you know, uh, collaboration, sometimes it's like, you know, so narrow so that's that's the only um you know obstacles that i face when i you know trying to uh introduce this unknown to my generation is it can can you guys hear me is it clear i mean like yes yes it's clear yeah so so i i think like so far that's the only 
the only obstacles I face. But from that, like everyone that in the Tanun community, they love to share their knowledge and so on. So knowledge part, like the that things for sure it saves. But when it when it came to like you know how to introduce to my generation, yes, sometimes the bridge is not you know available because sometimes you know we are still in the environment where I don't know, you know, people still like thinking I'm too young to, you know, present this or, you know, that kind of mindset is still like, but I do believe that I have enough time to reach that stage. So I just keep going. My, my opinion is, and after that, I so I think Jenny is, is, is about to ask questions about my opinion and then, yeah, your, your, your thought, please. Experience back when I was in college, and at that time I have a chance to work with the Dayak Basap. It's located very remote area in East Kalimantan, and the challenge is uh, for young generation is the place and the uh, uh, what is a jarak jarak in English. Uh, yeah, yeah, the distance. the gap, yeah, the distance between a uh, campus in the crafter. So because they didn't came directly to the crafter, they can get belong uh, by the emotional engagements um, to the crafter, how the process, they just know it from by the book or by like this webinar. I think if academic have chance to go directly there and have a chat with the weaver, crafter there how they create it uh, or even they can uh, have a experience directly to create the textiles i think it's good for uh, the young generations and they can build the strongest emotional engagement and they can be proud of the textiles thank you but uh, uh, Jeannie, do you have a question Jenny? Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Yes, go um, ahead, please. Is it possible that uh, sebelum ditenun, motifnya itu sudah ditentukan berdasarkan uh, posisi pola bajunya? Jadi, uh, kan kita udah tahu nih ya sebagai desainer, harusnya sudah tahu um, nanti bagian lehernya di mana, dadanya di mana, pinggangnya di mana, gitu. Bagian depan yang mana, bagian belakang yang mana. Uh, terlebih lagi kalau bisa polanya zero waste, jadi tidak meninggalkan sisa kain. Nah, itu kan udah kayak puzzle. Uh, Benar-benar harus pas mana yang badan depan, belakang, belakang badan belakang, kemudian sleeve-nya. Apakah bisa sebelum ditenun, kita sudah merencanakan dulu uh, uh, posisi motifnya di mana, sehingga ketika ditenun tuh benar-benar pas di daerah itu aja yang diberi motif, sehingga nanti ketika kain dipotong itu tidak mengganggu motifnya. Kalau di batik, di jumputan, ini udah saya terapkan dan bisa. Tapi kan kalau di tenun, mungkin teknisnya beda, mungkin lebih sulit juga. Tapi apakah ini possible? So this is a very technical question, uh, very hard to translate. But basically, Jenny was asking, is it possible to pre-design a piece of cloth? So when they turn it into a, a, a dress, they already can, can map out the design easily, where to put certain motif and so on. Yeah, is that the question, yeah? Yes, thank Not you. Yeah? Okay, thank yeah. you. Silakan, silakan. Go ahead. Maybe I'll try mm -hmm. to answer that one. Uh, okay, Mbak, Mbak Chandra. Yeah, karena saya lebih banyak bekerja dengan penenun. Uh, <laughs> gitu ya. Untuk tenun-tenun tertentu sangat bisa. It's very possible for particular tenun. For example, with tenun ikat, that is possible. Also in is Sumba for Tanun Pahikung, it may be possible as long as you have a very, uh, not really possible in, in the sense that where you put the, the collar or where you put the sleeve or where you put the front, but you can create particular sizes of panels of motifs in Pahikung. And I think the same concept would be the same for Songket. Whereas with tenun ikat, you can actually 
you know, because with the non ikat you create a canvas made from the thread in a sense, and then you can actually draw where you want everything. Gitu. Gitu Mbak Jenny. Jelas kah? Maybe uh, Epin, and with Batik it's very possible as well. Maybe uh, Epin uh, and uh, Epin and Mas Wahya would like to add. Okay, so what I learned from Tanun, especially uh, Ikat, so basically the motif was tied before and then dyed before it weave, right? So uh, I think it would be difficult to, you know, placing the panels uh, before it weaved because, 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 because the, the different, different, um, the diapers of the motif when it's tied. It's the uniqueness of the ikat itself. I mean, like, yeah. But to if if the purpose was to you know make it zero ways or stuff, so we can play around with the pattern. Maybe just square pattern, you know, just giving a notch, not really, you know, cut it into like you know proper armhole. So yeah, we can play towards the pattern if we are focusing on sustainability. But if it's if it you know means to have like you know a uh, certain block pattern that you know weaved and after that we just cut it following the line i think it's going to be difficult and as well as it's also still giving the waste but if we you know focusing on zero waste yeah definitely we can you know just doing a simple square you know or drapey pattern stuff so it's just dependent on the purpose, I guess. By Epin, quick answer before okay. we end this. Aku nambahin. Yes. Oke, okay. aku nambahin sedikit uh, in bahasa Indonesia saja karena yes, lebih sure. mudah uh, menjawab pertanyaan Mbak Jenny tadi. Uh, dalam tenun itu ada lusi dan pakan ya. Jadi seperti tadi Mbak Kiki jelaskan, um, in ikat uh, teknik it's very possible ya, yeah. especially for the back strap loom atau tenun yang dibuatnya itu sangat manual ya di bahasa Inggris kita bilangnya backstrap loom tapi kalau untuk mes seperti ATBM yang menggunakan mesin yang lebih uh, complicated itu agak sulit tapi kalau misalkan uh, desainer mau pesan uh, custom itu mungkin banget dengan menggunakan backstrap loom ini kita bahkan bisa create motif kita sendiri dan minta uh, penenunnya untuk membuatkan untuk Special ulat gitu, jadi sangat mungkin. So basically, what Evan says, uh, uh, responding to uh, uh, Jin's Jean, yeah. uh, question, also on Chatra's answer, so it's very possible, uh, especially for ikat and even for for batik, also possible. But it has we need discussion among between between the the, uh, the customer and the designer on how to create that. Um, I think we come to the end of this this uh, very uh, exciting talk. So I really enjoy moderating it. Um, I come up with one question, uh, no one question, one conclusion, <laughs> one conclusion. It's not, it's, it's very short actually from, I'm sure you guys have, have listened to this very carefully. Uh, 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 so basically that the, the message is very clear, reintroducing Indonesian textiles to Indonesians. Uh, I think that's, to me, that's the, the, a clear message that we should do uh, to make sure that uh, the young generation uh, uh, will continue, will appreciate our tradition even more. Maybe next time we can talk about sustainable fashion, but not today. So maybe in the next in the next program, uh, we can talk about that and other issues uh, deeper. Um, now, Mastoni, I'll hand it back to you. And thank you. And I'm Mastoni. <laughs> Mastoni, are you still there? Uh, it seems we lost my story. Mm. Hi. Oh, it's still there. Uh, there okay. is. You're the boss. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, thank I you. I can't go uh, without your permission. Sorry, <laughs> and Epin and Mario. Oh, why you for being such a great uh, speaker uh, and sources. So we are still engaging in a discussion and yes definitely do drop by our exhibition as
Hmm. We've lost him again. Yeah, we've got a connection problem, but yes, uh, Mastoni, uh, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, so do drop by our <laughs> exhibition right here all the way until the 9th in at Stanford Arts Center, 155 Waterloo Street, Unit 02 02. Good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Pak Ilham. Thank you, Pak Ilham. Thank you so Thank much. You. Terima kasih, Pak Ilham. Thank you, everyone. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Bye. Sama-sama, Mas. Terima kasih. <laughs> Pak Ilham. <laughs>